Hey guys, in this video, I'd like to share with you a list of 12 insights about pianos that I have observed across my years of playing and practicing piano and teaching piano, of course. And I think that you're gonna find this list helpful, especially if you're going to be in the market for a new piano soon. But generally speaking, I think as a pianist, it's really important for you to know about the different kinds of pianos and what they are capable of and when they make sense. Because your choice of instrument is really crucial in your development as a musician. So with that said, I'm gonna get into the points here. The very first point, and probably the most important point, the main reason I'm making this video, is that the feedback that your instrument provides you is absolutely crucial. It's very, very important. The instrument needs to be responsive to your input, and it needs to differentiate between good playing and bad playing. Ideally, Good playing should be rewarded with a beautiful sound, which means that the piano should be capable of making a beautiful sound. And at the same time, it should sort of discourage uh, not so beautiful sounds by allowing you to see the difference between the two. And so if your piano is always like really dull and uh, really kind of soft, and it, it, you know, no matter how much energy you put into it, it's not really like particularly bright, you're going to notice what a disservice that instrument is doing for you when you get on any other piano. Every other piano is gonna feel like it's extremely bright and you're not gonna feel like you have any kind of control. And at the same time, if your piano uh, is always like really loud, it's going to discourage nuanced playing and it's going to discourage you from being really sensitive as a musician. And I experienced this firsthand because I upgraded my old Yamaha U1 that I purchased back in college like 10 plus years ago I upgraded that piano to this piano earlier this year. This is a Yamaha U3. And this piano has newer hammers, or I think brand new hammers actually, and it is generally a lot more sensitive than my previous instrument. And the reason for that is that the previous instrument, the U1, which you can see on this channel, by the way, all of the top-down videos up to this, probably before this year, uh, would be using that piano. And you, you can see what a difference the uh, the hardened hammers that it had, because they were is kind of uh, an older piano, right? and had been played pretty hard over the course of its life, a little bit by me, but also by whoever owned it previously, those hard hammers made the piano pretty much always loud no matter what I did. And so it sort of discouraged any kind of nuance in my development whenever I was actually practicing on that instrument. And over the over the lifetime, over your lifetime as a musician, like that's not a good thing because you're, you are creating habits and you're reinforcing habits and you're making associations every time you practice. And so your instrument needs to properly reward your input or it needs to properly respond to your input so that you can make good decisions about how to balance your hands, about how to bring certain parts out, uh, about how uh, loud or soft to play, just generally speaking, about how much energy to use. The way your piano sounds in your ear and the way the piano feels, uh, all of these things work together to guide your musicianship and to help you realize your potential. So your choice of instrument is really, really important. And it's very important that your piano respond properly to your playing. The second point I have is that digital instruments are generally preferable to bad acoustic pianos. They're, so basically digital instruments are uh, obviously, gen, you know, they, they can be pretty cheap. You can get the minimum necessary digital instrument for like four or 500 bucks probably. And it has the benefit of not needing to be tuned and having no maintenance and being very easy to move. So digital instruments are very attractive, uh, especially for new pianists. And I do recommend them, generally speaking, especially over bad acoustic pianos. And by bad acoustic piano, I mean something that is at the end of its life, something that's way too small. For instance, uh, this is a 52 inch um, upright piano. And it's like one of the bigger, or I think it's the biggest upright piano that you can really get. And uh, that means that the strings are bigger, like everything's bigger about this piano compared to something like a console piano, which is where the top of it only goes to about here. And I see those a lot uh, where you have a piano that's passed down from generation to gener generation or whatever. And my experience with, with like older console pianos is that like they're almost impossible to tune and they're almost always too loud because the hammers are often like at the end of their life, like I mentioned with my U1 earlier. And so like, it's got no dynamic range, it's always loud, and it's very difficult to keep in tune. And I mean, you're just gonna be better served by buying a digital instrument than that, in my opinion. The digital instrument's gonna sound like a, a nicely tuned piano and it's gonna, it's gonna be better at providing that uh, input uh, response that you need. 
Now, the next thing that you need to know, especially if you're in the market for a digital instrument, is that you absolutely, if you want to take piano seriously and you want to not have to be flipping your instrument out like very soon, you need 88 keys and you need them to be fully weighted and you need uh, obviously a piano bench and you need a stand that doesn't wobble and you need a sustain pedal and you need a place to put your music, referred to as a music desk. So all of these make for like the place that you'll be practicing. And you can't really skimp on any of these things. This is the bare minimum and you can get it for like four or $500. Of course you can spend a lot more than that, but this is the minimum that you need to get started. The next thing you need to know, point number four, is that, this is my opinion, a good acoustic piano is almost always preferable to a digital instrument of pretty much any kind. Now, there are some exceptions to this. For instance, if you are in an apartment and you don't want to disturb your neighbors, I am slightly embarrassed to say that I did have my Yamaha, Yamaha U1 in an apartment. It was on the third floor, so it was very difficult to move it, and it, it was a bright piano, so it has had a lot of trouble being soft enough. Of course, I did have the practice pedal, which I used a lot, but you know, perhaps that is not the best place for an acoustic piano, and I should have sold it and got a digital instrument for that time. Uh, so uh, that's a situation where it makes sense to have a digital piano, but generally speaking, a good acoustic piano is going to outperform a digital piano in basically all ways. And the reason for this is sort of a limitation on technology, but it's also how the instrument works. A, an acoustic piano has all kinds of um, uh, really complicated linkages and hammer assemblies and everything, and it connects to the string. I mean, like if you've ever looked at a hammer mechanism, it's really, really complicated. There's a lot of moving parts. It's a brilliant invention, and it's a velocity-based invention, and it's re very, very responsive, and there's a lot of granularity to the touch. And a digital instrument looks like a piano, and it uh, sounds like a piano, and it feels like a piano, but generally speaking, at the end of the day, each key is really just a button that you're pressing that signals a uh, recording of a real piano. Now, I know it's more technologically sophisticated than that, especially these days, like digital actions have gotten a lot better, especially when it comes to hybrid pianos, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But just considering digital pianos, there's only so many levels of, of sound, like they'll, they'll record the uh, different volumes of sound at uh, basically every different key velocity. And they only have so many of those because there's like memory bandwidth limitations and everything. So it doesn't have like an infinite uh, list of possibilities of sounds that in terms of like your dynamic range, in terms of how loud and soft you can play, how granular the difference is between loud and soft. A digital piano cannot compete with an acoustic piano. Like the technology's not there yet. I don't know when it's gonna be there. And also like the sound of all of the strings resonating and this, this cabinet resonating and the harp in the inside of the piano resonating sound and how you feel it in the keys and where the sound comes from. It, it's an, a, a very authentic experience in an acoustic piano. And in a digital piano, it's coming from speakers. Like they can simulate it, you know, all they want and I think they've done a pretty good job for the most part, but still, I mean, I considered buying a digital instrument. I considered buying one of the Yamaha Avant Grands instead of this. And I went and played on one, even though I thought it was a very, very impressive instrument. And there are situations that it makes sense. I realized within like five seconds that I needed an acoustic. I just needed that sensitivity. I needed the raw sound of the physical thing. So I think that a good acoustic piano is basically uh, preferable in almost all situations to a digital piano. The only downside, a couple downsides, they're more expensive to move and they need to be tuned, but they are very, very much worth it. And they're going to, they'll outlast you probably, you know, especially if you get a good one at the beginning of its life. Okay, point number five, out of tune pianos are very unrewarding to play on. Now I notice this when my piano starts to go out of tune, um, I, I tend to practice less when my piano goes out of tune. I wonder if there's a coincidence between that or if they're related. I think they're related. I noticed that uh, some of my students, especially those who have those like really old console pianos that like can't ever be tuned, I have a lot of trouble getting those students to practice because their instrument doesn't really reward them for their efforts. And so like being able to be in tune, like there's something really attractive and beautiful about perfectly tuned intervals on the piano. It's so beautiful. It makes you just wanna hear it all the time. It makes you wanna practice. Uh, but when your piano is out of tune, like when the weather changes, this piano goes out of tune. It's kind of out of tune right now. 
it makes me not want to uh, play it as much. So like, you know, ke keeping your piano in tune and making sure that you have an instrument that is capable of being tuned, uh, that's kind of crucial to motivation, in my opinion. Okay, point number six. Older acoustic pianos that are not restored tend to have hardened hammers and have great difficulty with soft playing. So this is what I was talking about in my first point, uh, but just generally speaking, you can expect this. Unless the piano was just like in a container, like in storage or something for its whole life, if you get an older piano and it hasn't been restored, you are probably getting older internals and they have a lifespan. And uh, what happens as the piano gets older is that those hammers, they get like the fibers on the hammers get really, really compressed and they hit the string um, in a uh, much harsher way. And so not only does the piano have a harsher sound, it has a very aggressive sound, it's gonna be very bright, like the older the piano is, the brighter it tends to be, uh, but it loses its dynamic range. It has a lot of difficulty playing soft. And also the keys tend to wear unevenly a little bit. And so you might have trouble making an equal tone or for um, making a, a good, a well-shaped phrase on an instrument that has really, really hard hammers. So, I mean, that's something to keep in mind if you're in the market for a uh, used acoustic piano. Point number seven, a bad acoustic piano is very difficult to get rid of, especially if it's large. So this is my public service announcement to you, uh, warning you about free pianos or really inexpensive pianos I mean, maybe if you're getting an acoustic piano and you're not at a good reputable dealer, you should probably have a tech check it out. And uh, I personally like Yamaha and Kuwai pianos, especially for used pianos uh, compared to other brands, but that's just a preference. But, you know, if you're, if you're wondering what I think, that's a, I think that's a good way to go, especially if you get it from a dealer. But uh, a bad acoustic piano, like these console pianos, or really even a, a grand that can't be tuned, or if there's something obviously wrong with it, I've seen countless times where like these pianos can't even be given away because it's so expensive to move them and it's so expensive to tune them and then tune them again and then tune them again to get it to settle and to accept its tuning without going out, especially if it hasn't been tuned in a long time or it hasn't been well maintained, you're gonna have a lot of trouble getting rid of this piano. So like really there's no such thing as free in this case. Like it's unlikely I think that you're gonna be given a quality well maintained instrument where the, the owner loved it and took good care of it for free. I think you're gonna pay for that instrument in almost all situations. And for the most part, uh, a piano that's gonna be a hand-me-down or a free one that like a church is given away or whatever, it, it was probably played hard and it's probably not gonna be the right instrument for you. And when you realize that, you're gonna have a lot of trouble getting it out of your house. So that's my public service announcement. Try to avoid free pianos and older acoustic pianos and uh, pianos of brands that do not have good reputations. Point number eight, the bigger the piano, the bigger the dynamic range, the longer the strings. And generally speaking, the louder it can get, but also really, really big pianos can also get really, really soft. Like they have huge dynamic range. And so the general advice that uh, you'll often hear when you're gonna select an acoustic piano is to get the biggest one you can afford and the biggest one you can fit in your house. And I really agree with that uh, for the most part. Like, I mean, if you're trying to figure out, should I get a seven foot grand or a nine foot grand or whatever? Okay, you're probably, you don't need this video. <laughs> you can figure that out. But uh, like, there's a big difference between a five foot grand and a six foot grand. There's a big difference between an upright piano and a grand piano. Uh, this is a 52 inch uh, upright piano, which is the biggest upright piano I can fit in here. And the only reason I have this piano as opposed to a grand down here is because I could not fit uh, a grand piano in this room. Like it just doesn't make sense for the layout. So I bought the biggest upright that I could get. Uh, but generally speaking, if I could, I would have preferred a grand in here. And if I could have had a grand, I would have wanted the largest one that I could get because that's gonna be best for my musicianship because it's gonna be the most sensitive instrument and it's gonna have the most richness of sound, especially on the low end of the piano. And uh, one thing I noticed when I got this piano versus the U1, the U1 is only a 48 inch piano, so it only comes up to like here. And so that really matters for the low end of the piano. The bigger the piano, the more power it's gonna have on its low end. And like almost all music has uh, pedal tones and, and bass notes and things. I mean, it's, it's gonna be the difference between whether or not the, the piano feels like it fills the room or if it sounds thin. So you wanna get a big piano if you can afford it and if it makes sense for your uh, living situation. Okay, the next point is that there is number nine. 
There is a big difference between a grand piano action and an upright piano action. There is a big difference. But generally speaking, when you first start playing, you're not really gonna notice this. You might not even be able to tell the difference between a keyboard action and a, uh, and a, uh, a, a, a regular like physical acoustic piano action. But that being said, the better you get and the longer you play and the faster you tend to play, the more you're going to pick up on the differences between an upright action and a grand action. And I also have firsthand experience with this because I think last year or the year before, I don't remember exactly, I bought a Yamaha C3 six foot grand, which I have directly above this room and you'll see it sometimes on this channel. Now I have children and all kinds of noise upstairs, so I can't always go in and make, 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 uh, make videos on it. It's very difficult to make good, clean, noiseless videos on that piano. But the action on that piano, really everything about that piano blows this one away. Uh, there's no comparison. The tone is better, the richness of the sound is better, and the action is better. And by better, I mean like the way that the grand piano action works, it's like horizontally laid down and it has the assistance of gravity to make it work, which means that the keys, uh, they come up to you a lot faster and they come up and more, con like um, there's a more consistent sense of pressure or uh, resistance from here to here because the length of the key is longer. Each key is kind of like on a hinge and a rocker. And uh, generally the keys on upright pianos tend to be kind of short, like they only go under this point like a little bit. And so it's harder to play around here compared to here and there's not as much resistance um, all the way down compared to a grand piano. Also, generally speaking, when you play a note on an upright piano, you, you pretty much have to fully release it before you can get it to sound again. But on a grand piano, you can pretty much pull, uh, re uh, repeat the note like anywhere in the key travel point and it will sound. And so the keys will come back up at you faster. They have uh, more resistance, even though it might, maybe it's a little harder to play on at first. It's better because it's easier to play really even and really fast on a grand piano, in my opinion. And so I try to do, this is very difficult to do, like I said, with the kids and everything, but I try to do as much practicing on my upstairs grand instrument uh, compared to this one. I try to do that as much as I can. And generally, I think a grand's going to help you develop a better technique. And that's why uh, people generally recommend grand pianos. Uh, so, and this has everything to do with the action. Okay, the next point, point number 10, is that there's a big difference between a, an acoustic action, like a grand action or an upright action, and a keyboard action. An exception being a hybrid piano. So I'll talk about that in the next point. But generally, if it's not a hybrid action, if it's a regular digital piano action, it's not going to include all of the components and all of the momentum needed to move those components, like all of how that feels and the weight and the heft of all of those parts working together. A digital piano is only, it's gonna attempt to simulate that. They call it graded hammer weight or whatever. They have kind, all kinds of marketing terms or whatever. But it's not gonna feel like a real piano action exactly. And the better you get, the more you will notice this difference, which is why I recommend, especially if you're going to be playing piano for a long time, uh, that you get an acoustic instrument if you can, because the better you get, the more you're gonna realize the difference between an acoustic uh, action and a digital action. And the digital action is just, it's not going to be nearly as sensitive, and it's, it's I don't know how to describe it other than the feeling is different and it, it feels inauthentic by comparison. So uh, there's a big difference between even the best uh, digital uh, piano action that money can buy and a acoustic action. Point number 11, there are varying qualities of digital keyboard actions. So like something you might pay 500 bucks for, provided it's fully weighted, and something you might pay um, four or five grand for, uh, the difference in those actions are, it's gonna be pretty big. So the more expensive instrument is going to attempt to replicate the feeling of a real piano action a lot better than the inexpensive instrument. The more expensive instrument is likely going to include more parts in the hammer assembly to try to simulate the, the sense that a normal acoustic piano action has. And this is where I think it makes sense to talk about uh, what a hybrid piano is. So a hybrid piano is basically a digital piano except for it's using a real action, like an actual authentic action like the uh, Yamaha NU1X, I think, is a piano that I was considering for the studio. And it basically has the same action that this piano has. That means if you take off this, uh, the, the lid here and you take off all of the parts of the piano and you look at all of the components that are uh, attached to and associated with the key, it's literally the same mechanism, except for at the end of the line, you don't have a hammer hitting a string. You have a hammer, same hammer, um, 
that's either there for weight or it's it's connected to um, basically the digital component of the piano. So it's got a, a hybrid piano has some of the drawbacks that a, a a regular digital piano has in that you know it's it's whatever the sound sampling is it's limited to whatever the memory is on the piano it's kind of technologically limited, uh, but at the same time they feel really really good. So if you have the money, I mean you're gonna pay for a hybrid piano like a real one like one of the Yamahas or the Kawais, like their version of the hybrid piano, they really are quite impressive and they are absolutely excellent at helping like professional pianists or pianists who really want to have a very quality instrument to practice on with the benefits of uh, silence and being able to practice in, in quiet, like an apartment setting or whatever. Hybrid pianos are awesome for that and that's, that's what I feel like the proper role is or if you have space limitations, right? Hybrid pianos are actually really, really impressive. But like I said, you're gonna pay for it. So if you're wanting a digital piano for the long term, definitely consider a hybrid piano. Okay, the last point, and um, just kind of a general wrap up of this, is that the differences between the different kinds of pianos become much more apparent the more experienced you get. So when you first start playing, you might go up to a $500 piano with fully weighted keys, like a digital piano, and you could compare it with a, a, a grand piano, and you'll you'll definitely conclu uh, conclude that this, the grand piano sounds better, but you won't know exactly why or in what way, uh, and you might not even be able to tell the difference in the way they feel. But the better you get, and the more you're doing scales and fast pieces, and you have a sense of how nuanced this mechanism is of what the piano action is, like it's such a nuanced, precise um, tool. It's amazing, like the way the piano action works is amazing. The way that a piano works is amazing. And uh, you'll, you'll start to develop, as you get better, you'll start to develop a sensitivity and an appreciation for these things. And that's when it makes sense to, uh, to get a good quality instrument that rewards your playing and, uh, and can grow with you. Like certain kinds of pianos, like your $500 digital piano or whatever, I mean, that's gonna be great for starting out, but it's only gonna serve you so long before you're gonna be limited and, and sort of bottlenecked by that instrument. So the more seasoned you get, the more the differences between the pianos are gonna matter, and the more thought and research you're gonna to need to put uh, into your decision. So it makes sense to get something to start out on, and then once you realize you're serious and that this is like a new uh, lifelong hobby of yours, um, you're gonna to want to upgrade your instrument to something that you're gonna keep for a really, really long time. And this is definitely on my mind because I've been helping some of my students upgrade their instruments and I upgraded this instrument recently and I upgraded my, I, I got the grand piano I think last year or the year before. And um, th these instruments have done wonders for me in terms of uh, encouraging my musical development in the way that I wanna go and helping me realize my potential. And that's the role of the instrument. So the instrument that you choose is very important. So in closing, uh, if you're in the market for a piano, Consider your choices very carefully. The common advice I hear is that you want to try to buy the biggest acoustic piano that you can afford, but if you have to go digital, then you want to buy the digital with the nicest action. Generally, the pianos that have the nicer actions also have good sound. So really, like, start with the action. Start with how realistic it feels, and when in doubt, uh, go into Reddit or go into uh, some, of the, some of the other forums from pianists and look at some of the comments that seasoned players might say about various models of digital pianos. Uh, because if you don't have that experience, you're really just not going to know. And uh, you'll learn uh, through these uh, shared experiences uh, which instruments to get and which instruments to avoid. So that being said, definitely do your research. Definitely pick the right instrument for, uh, for your goals. And uh, you know, enjoy your, your practicing and enjoy your, your hobby of piano playing. And hopefully your instrument will help you do that. So anyway, I hope you found this video helpful and I will see you in the next one.